Okay, it's Jones. I wanted to go over the watercolor. Um, something that I've noticed as I've worked with students is that they haven't been given like the proper kind of lowdown on the watercolors. These watercolors are for color mixing. So you'll see that there's two yellows that yellow being next to the red for warms and this yellow being next to the blue for greens. So these are for like your oranges and reds and these are for like your greens. That's white and black and brown and I believe that's uh, a blue or a purple. These don't have any water in them. So when you go to use your watercolors, first I wanna talk about this. these trays come out so that you can wash your mixing palette and keep it clean because it's really hard to use your actual mixing palette when you don't keep your palette clean. So at the end of your use, you just take your watercolors out and rinse this so that you have um, you have a clean palette. So here's my watercolor brush. And the first thing I'm gonna do is hydrate my watercolors. And what I mean by hydrate is I'm gonna add water in them because they don't have water in them. So there's they're not really ready to use. What I see a lot is they kids dip their brush in the water and then cram their brush in the pal the in the pigment. And that isn't actually the most efficient way to use them. I'm getting them hydrated. And I'm adding water. And ooh, that's obviously magenta. I thought that was like a purple or something, but it's a magenta. Yeah, this is a classic academic color mixing palette, which is rad. So I'm going and adding water. I'm not contaminating anything. So um, the reason why you have two yellows is because yellow is not the, a very strong color. And if you tr mix a green and actually get green in that yellow, then your yellow is always going to have like a, like a blue in it. And then the same with the red. So, you know, you do want to always watch and, and keep your yellows somewhat clean. This area is for mixing. So I'm going to be using a magenta and I'm just going to take my brush and put it in my palette. One thing about the palette is you can actually mix colors. So here's my magenta and I wanted to make like a, like a, a like a peachy, almost like a skin tone. So I'm going to add a little water. I'm going to rinse it off. And then I'm going to take a little orange. I'm going to add that in there. And then I'm going to rinse it off. And I'm just going to take a teeny, teeny bit of blue, a black, a little bit of blue. I'm going to go over here and look at it. And I'm just going to a little bit of yellow and just kind of get closer to the, you can tell what your color is going to be on the paper because the white plastic will let you know kind of what it's going to look like behind the paper. Watercolor isn't opaque, it's transparent. So that means you can see through it. So like when you're using this on the white, this is kind of giving you an idea of what it's going to be. So, you know, I'm, I'm working with like a, so I just made mine really pink and it's very light because I have a lot of water. So if I wanted to make it dark, I could go in and um, let it dry and go back and layer it. Or I could go in right now with some pigment and make it really dark. And I'm using straight out of that to make it really dark. After it's hydrated, you can go in and make a really dark color. And I'm kind of mixing as I go. So there's that. And I went right on the dry paper. So for my Art 2 students, you actually have watercolor paper, which has a fiber in it, like a cloth fiber that pulls the color in. Art 1, we were hoping to get you some watercolor paper, but you have some white drawing paper that will work just as well. Um, just the watercolor paper has a fiber that pull in. And you can see as I'm going, I'm pulling out. So say I wanted to get like a skin tone. I'll take that color I mixed and, and do that. And say I want it to be just a little bit browner. Not a problem. I'm just going to mix it. So one of the things about mixing, I'm always protective of my yellow, is this is a browner color. So when you make brown and you know, it's it's pretty much like a little blue inside of orange gives you a different shade of brown. So like my brown here is, is you know, I might want to make it a little a little redder. Another thing you can do is you can get your paper wet first. So I'm using clean water and I'm getting it 
and getting it wet. What you want to avoid doing, and one of the main reasons why I made this video, is you don't mix into your pigments. You want to keep your pigments the pure color. So you're always washing your brush. One thing I get is a, a little um, a little rag. Like I have a little rag. So I can, you know, after I wash my brush, I can dry it or whatever. So I got my paper wet here with water. And I'm going to take my blue, which is, I haven't, you know, my, my blue is super pure. I'm going to take that blue. And I'm going to go right into that water. And this is for a fade and different values. When watercolor dries, you can layer it. You can go back on top and layer it. So it's not one shot and done. You can actually go back and layer it. You can go back when it's wet. So I just washed my brush. I'm gonna take this color, this deeper blue, and I'm gonna go in here. And I'm doing it while it's wet. So there is that. And it's something to play around with. When you have a dry edge, like say over here, it's, you see how it stains? So you wanna, and you see how, if, if I'm trying to paint something and I try and go back into it, or try if I try and paint another color, say I wanna paint blue next to this. If you do it on a wet edge, it's gonna blend into each other, right? So you have to let it dry, cause it all blends together. So if you're looking for crispness, you know, you're gonna have to let it dry and be really careful about how you, see how bright that is? You can get your colors super, super bright. You just wanna hydrate those colors. See what happened? When you hit that water edge, you lose that. It's a water really pulls watercolor and it's hard, you know, you gotta, if you really want it thick, you gotta go right into that deep color and you gotta mix that color really deep. pulling it out. So now I have a water brush. I use, I often use a water brush, which is what a water brush is, or what I call water brush is just a brush with water. And that way I can pull around. And if I want to lighten things, you can go in and lighten things. So my brush, and then I can dry my brush with my towel and I can go in with the dry brush and pick up and move things around. If I want to, I can bring edges out if I want to with a water brush. I can come and I can get some water and I can pull this, come right to that edge and pull that down. And say I want, say like all these colors are too light. I need a really bright color. You can just take that and go right in there and you can get really, really bright. Um, super, super bright. So that's, you know, this is my little story. Now at the end, you see how my colors are still pure? That's how you're gonna make them last. And then you gotta wash everything up. You take your colors out, you take this to the sink and you wash it out, which I'll do right now. You dry everything, let it, and then you just leave your watercolors to dry open. The water will dry back into it and then you have preserved your watercolors.